the early 90s, when Neil and Michelle set out to bring the best of the good life to South African audiences, he had a BA and performers diploma from UCT. But what really qualified him was being a natural communicator and storyteller, being interested in the world and being able to improvise. The same talents that now put him top of the world in TV drama. I may be the newest top link presenter for now, but to those of you who are real fans, let's take it back. 20 years back, we had Michelle Garforth and we had Neil McCarthy. I always wondered what happened to Neil, and it turns out he's still involved in TV, except he's behind the camera. So I'm here at his offices in Fremantle in London to find out how he's doing. Simba felt a bit like he was auditioning again. Neil, how are you, sir? Hello, how's it Simba? you very good to meet you. Pleasure meeting you too. It's an honor to meet this guy, the guy who started it all. You know what, I had a different process to get on the show, doing a presenter search. Yeah. How did you get onto Top Billing? Patience Stevens, who's, a, as you well know, the executive producer of the show, and who's really created Top Billing from the start, she shot an insert on me uh, as an actor. I was performing in a, in a play, and she was doing a little piece for, for another show on, on the background of the play. And uh, she said to me, I think you could, uh, you could have a career as a presenter on camera. Neil McCarthy. She's Michelle Garfield. No, no, don't try and stand on your head. We know you've had a really rough week. Yes, but we're here with top billing to put things back in perspective. As a Shakespearean actor, Neil knew that in any show worth its salt, the lead needs a partner, someone to bounce ideas off. And in Michelle Garforth, he'd found Oberon's Puck. Well, when you think of Switzerland, one of the first things that comes to mind is beautiful mountains. Um, well, perhaps one of the first things that comes to mind is very expensive or boring people, which they're not, but beautiful mountains they certainly are. And here are Neil and I right in the middle of the Alps. Right outside La Chaux de Fonc, to be specific. Of course, the temptation is to sit back and look at them and breathe in the crystal clean air. But if you can find the energy, one of the most exciting things is mountain biking. On-screen chemistry was never a problem. Architecture, however, was something neither was qualified in. Yet they soon managed to sound like perfect authorities. And most important, it made sense. A straight line is ungodly, he said. An idea he expressed in the uneven floors of this, the Kunsthaus Venn Museum. They become a melody for the feet. They put man back in touch with the natural rhythms and they make you very careful not to trip. In providing entertaining viewing, Neil found himself rethinking what he thought he knew about many countries. He fell for Australia, Germany, and in Bangkok, there was another world. Most of the tourists come here only to window shop, except, as you notice, there's no windows, and the goods are sort of paraded past you as you go. But take it from me, you've never been to a shopping mall like this one, nor have you ever travelled in such unique style. From an actor to a presenter, how was that transition? It wasn't quite as easy as I thought it was going to be. I thought presenting was uh, another form of acting. I thought it would just be a role, you know, like any other role that you just sort of put on. You put it on like a costume and you become that presenter kind of guy. But um, I found it was a bit, it, it took me a bit longer than I thought it would to come to terms with what presenting actually is, which is kind of just being relaxed and being yourself and being able to be spontaneous and um, unforced in front of a camera. One element it took a while to master was where to shoot the weekly links which set up each story. Before houses became the perfect controllable location, shooting links could be wild. Over the Cape Coast. But somebody who's a bit better qualified to try than we are. <laughs> <laughs> I got wine in my eye. Unlike a studio, on location things happen. Hot air rises and you have to keep calm and carry on. It was in the 18th century that mankind first fulfilled Leonardo da Vinci's dream of taking flight. And it was in a contraption rather similar to this one. Today people are rediscovering the incredible <laughs> thrill of taking off into the air, borne aloft on this bubble of hot air, which is trapped inside this fabric balloon, which is, as you can see, it's the size of a circus tent. It's one of modern life's last true adventures. And it's an adventure we're about to embark on. Right. Whoa, look at that. I think we should get out of here. <laughs>
Even recording thousands of miles away, they still manage to always bring it back to you at home in your living room. Well, that's it from the top billing crew here on location in Vienna. But even though this show's over, the glamorous show here in Vienna certainly isn't. No worries. We've still got Hoygans to go to. We've got a nightclub opening tonight, sights to see. But uh, we'll be sharing all of this with you over the next six weeks. But to make you feel dreamy and romantic. Which is something you might well feel here in Vienna. <laughs> Here's Brian Ferry to play us out with. Will you still love me tomorrow? Good night. Off camera, Neil was to take a lead role in creating several top dramas, including hey. Issa Dingo, which in turn led here. What does Neil McCarthy do on a daily basis? Fremantle is about the biggest television production company in the world, and we have many, many affiliates and satellite companies throughout the world. I work in the worldwide drama section, and I kind of act as an in-house consultant. So I travel quite regularly to all those shows and, you know, interact with the teams on the shows, talk about content, and then give them some sort of objective, supposedly, outside eye on decisions that they're making, specifically around the content of the show, not so much around the production of the show. It's an operation the scale of which compares to the outlandish Luxor Hotel in Vegas, to which top billing was invited. And with everything he's seen before or since, this city in the desert was right up there with Neil's highlights. Amongst the many treasures that are here, there's only one thing that is actually real. And it's this funny little piece of rock here. It's a piece of the real pyramid at Giza. When you were doing top billing, what were some of your highlights? The experience of being in Vegas was just amazing. It is a, a place unlike any other on Earth that I've ever been to. It really is other places reinterpreted and made into entertainment. He's done this as head writer on Isidingo, Mzanzi 2 and Ghazlan, squeezing the full essay condition into tightly timed episodes, a skill he honed on top billing. The scale of this hotel is just mind-boggling. There are two and a half thousand rooms here, and down below me, so far down, I don't even want to have a look, is the largest atrium in the world. You can fit nine jumbo jets down there. Another memorable one was when we went bungee jumping and there was no discussion actually of will you actually be bungee jumping, will you jump off the bridge? And we got there and we did the whole thing and oh this is how you click it on and isn't that brilliant and look there's people jumping off the bridge and Michelle at the time said absolutely not, I am not jumping off this bridge, um, that's out of the question. So it became perfectly clear that the only person, if somebody was to jump off the bridge, I had to jump off the bridge. So I was completely terrified. It was just really nothing that I'd ever really dreamt that I really wanted to do with my life. But uh, you know, the camera was rolling, somebody had to do it, so I did it. And it was an amazing experience, but pretty terrifying, and one that I didn't really want to do again. And then Lawrence, who I think was shooting at the time, said, uh, why don't we do it again? And this time you can strap a camera to your arm so we can get close-ups of you as you go down. And stupidly I said, oh, all right, let's try that again. Now they say the second jump is even more terrifying than the first, but uh, I'm not worried about that. And with the help of my Robocop attachment, I'm hopefully going to give you an even more intimate view of this jump than you had of the last one. The second time, I found it actually harder than the first time. People say it gets easier. I, I didn't find that. It was actually harder. And uh, we got back a little like, really anxious to see if this footage works and is it brilliant. And it, the, 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 the G-forces had pulled the tape off the heads within a couple of seconds of me going. So it, it just, there were a few frames of me going, Wah! and that was it. That was, that was all they got from this morning of terror. And after free-falling for 50 meters, you'll find that there are few things more relaxing than lying quietly in a river, or anywhere for that matter. <laughs> Another memorable incident was uh, the time we went to Hungary, and Hungary had just uh, sort of become a place that you could visit, you know, the Iron Curtain had just come down. And we're in the middle of this sort of strange event that was taking place in this kind of historic place, but we knew nothing, no background, no, no experience of what, what, what is this wine, what is this culture, what is this event. And I just remember thinking, well, this is, this is a truly bizarre experience because I'm standing in front of the main street of this town, sort of talking with great authority into the camera about what this is, and this is the wine festival, and you know, Hungary, of course, is very famous for its wine. 
having, you know, talking from a position of complete ignorance. It's often best to say what you'd say to your best friend if he or she were there with you. And with this comes some choice lines. I don't mind drinking it, she's got bread feet. So I suppose that's where the acting background did, was useful. Simba was now doing the interviewing, but also taking scores of mental notes. From a master to a beginner, how am I doing as a presenter? I think you're doing very well. I always struggled with the aspect that you have to do these things over and over and over again, and you have to worry about the sound problems and you know, cars going past and those kinds of things. And uh, you seem to be enormously relaxed about that kind of aspect of it. If sports coaches play horses for courses with team selection, Neil and Michelle were our team and had to play whatever was before them. We've been told that the knack is just to throw your equestrian skills to the wind and uh, trust the skill of your mount. Um, luckily, Michelle and I have absolutely no equestrian skills to throw to the wind, so we've got no option but to trust the good old horsey. Here goes. On his skiing debut, if he hoped his bright red suit might be the main conversation piece, in the end it was his combination snowplow and opera performance, which most viewers remember. <laughs> Because nearly, I nearly got it. This is one way of stopping anyway. Neil met some fantastic characters on his travels, and he can now recommend some excellent adventures to his three children and to aspirant top billing presenters. Never pass up an opportunity to learn something new, he says. Believe in yourself and stay flexible. And he took his own advice when he visited China just as it was opening up to the world. It proved anything other than the place he'd expected. Here's a cultural tradition in its own way, just as ancient. Every morning in this city, huge numbers of people take to the streets to practice the ancient art of Tai Chi. And here's a variation, ballroom dancing. It's not even breakfast time yet and yet these people have been booging away since four o'clock this morning we could have listened to neil for a week for all those budding presenters that want to live their top willing dream have you got any advice you've got to learn to talk in complete joined up sentences you've got to be able to sum up experiences quite briefly and succinctly you know be able to look around and say well what's going on here and be able to distill that down into a few brief phrases that you can sort of give with purpose and authority and you know just be able to ignore what a camera is and what it's doing out there and the fact that everything you're saying is going down to tape and um, be able to put that out of your mind and find a way to just be relaxed and be spontaneous and be yourself in front of the camera. Neil, after years of not being on top of I want to know, do you still have it? Do you guys still think he has it? I want you to give us your best closing link to this insert to camera right now. Well, thanks for joining me here in London. It's been great to uh, see the camera and see you guys after 20 years. Um, I am out of the habit. It is very odd to be talking to a camera again. But uh, Simba, he's got it. <laughs> Stay with him. And uh, good luck and good luck to Top Billing for another 20 years. Thank you, Neil. <laughs> that was great. <laughs>